Thanks everyone for joining to our second episode of Trace Talks. I'm your host, Amit. This is our guest, Kirsch. Today we're gonna to talk about PCB design as it relates to AI and how AI is gonna change not just the world, but being an electrical engineer and, and being a PCB designer. Um, as you know, Sierra Circuits manufactures printed circuit boards and we also do PCB assembly. Today we find ourselves in our assembly facility located in San Jose, California. And let's just dive right in. Super excited to have you here today. Uh, I, I mean, you're always very impressive with everything that you're working on and everything that you're doing. And I think that the world needs to know, you know, what is it that, you know, Kirsch is up to. And so why don't you just drop us into your life right now and uh, tell us what's up, what's new. It's a chaos that has started to develop some order. So right now I am working full-time at Hasofu. That is the brand name for my company, Kirsch Global Enterprises and everything. And uh, I'm also working part-time as an adjunct professor at the University of Arkansas, you know, just giving the students some knowledge in electrical electronics engineering fundamentals. And on the side, I also do content creation and marketing, YouTubing for different software companies like Altium, EMA, Design Automation, Cadence, and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so putting out a lot of content and teaching the people some double E. Yeah. That's great. That's There's a, there's a lot to unpack there. We'll, we'll get through it, I promise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So, you know, the first thing that I think is great is that you've, you know, you're you're spending your time in an industry which is the flip side of what we do. So Sierra, we manufacture circuit boards and we assemble. You're the the you're ahead of us in the in the value chain, right? So what you work on, EE type stuff, design type stuff. But at some point there's a handoff. So I to me it's exciting always to, you know, speak to that, speak to EE type of, you know, what's important to EEs. So tell us about your company and and how you started that and why you started that. When when did you start it? When did you start your company? Right. So I started uh, Hasofu in February 2021. Okay. So it's been about, yeah, it's been three years now. Wow. Great. Okay. It felt like yesterday. <laughs> um, so I started that and you asked, why did I start that, right? Yeah, of course. Well, I started that out of frustration with <laughs> the university system. <laughs> And industry. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. That's very fair. <laughs> there was like this huge gap in what I needed to know to actually get hired in electrical engineering. Tell me about it. Yeah. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's astronomical. So I'm from the Bahamas, born and raised. I started off in physics and I figured, well, I want to do physics and math, but I ended up saying I need a more practical degree because at the time physics, like, how can you get paid for physics, right? So I went <laughs> I went to electrical engineering, switched over, transferred to the United States, was an international student for a few years, like a good, what, 15 years? That's great. Graduate school and all that stuff. So taking all of the undergraduate courses, the master's courses, and the PhD courses, running out of courses to take, I learned power systems, power electronics, control theory, all that stuff. And I found again and again, working as a graduate teaching assistant, because I couldn't pay for school. I was only on scholarships. And that's, that's the only way you could pay for school, being a GTA. Um, I found that the students, there was like this huge gap between what the university professors right. would be teaching and saying, like they'd be uttering words, right? but the students like myself, we weren't getting it a lot right. of times. Right. Like, how is it relevant in industry? How right. am I going to use this? Right. Uh, I would say rampant, like techniques to do the homework faster. Like right. people... I mean, I wasn't involved, you know, as a student. I'm just <laughs> saying, like, people had question banks and everything. Because they were like, we realized that there's this huge gap and the professors aren't going to care enough or even know to close that. So right. we're just going to do what we need to do to get the A, you right. know. And we'll do our internships and learn from there. So I'm like, to me, it didn't make sense that even though I was working, I was doing three scholarships and working my butt off to pay for school. Right. So I didn't have student loans. I don't have student loans. But there are people with student loans, getting scholarships and everything to right. spend four or five years of our life to not have a life in double E. Right. To survive for only 50% of us to make it, for only X, X percent of us to get a job. Right. 
<laughs> to learn that we got we did our bachelors to get to ground zero. Right. And we didn't actually learn what we need to learn in industry. That's right. That is true. You are out of luck. <laughs> If you're like me, introverted, didn't make the connections to get right. into internships early. Oh, oh, and by the way, yeah, you're not taught how to do the resume properly, not in a formal way that worked, because the Career Development Center didn't really know the deets, really. You'd have to pay for copywriters and all this stuff. Like, that's what I had to do to even get a chance to get interviews. And it's like, who you know, it's who you know. It's like, okay, well, why am I doing the bachelor's then? Right. If it's not my skill, the skill right. gap is too wide. Skill gap is too wide. Exactly. And I have to make connections and skip the resume. Why am I doing all this? Right. So my gripe and frustration was that I had to learn things like PCB design when I was the teaching assistant for senior design. So I had to learn it to teach it to the students right. while simultaneously doing all my courses, right. while seeing them like be frustrated with certain professors and everything. Um, and so learning all these skills, learning from books like Complete PCB Design with Craig Mitzner, learning from Doc, or learning from Robert Ferranek, learning from Dr. Bogatin, Lee Ritchie, uh, Dan Beaker, Kenneth, uh, Kenneth uh, Wyatt, and, and all the greats in PCB design outside of the curriculum. I'm like, right. this is nonsense. Right. There needs to be a gap bridge between what we're learning in school Correct. Versus what industry. So I don't have to keep hearing, oh, you don't have the relevant experience. It's like, right. why am I here? Yeah. No, it's school and education is a lot of investment and effort and time. And then to start at zero, basically, and not even have an opportunity in many cases, you know, to get hired or have an internship. It's just, it's brutal. So, so your company's aim is to bridge that gap, right? The company's aim is to bridge that gap and in engaging ways, is the, I could go off the handle sometimes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. The company's aim, this, aim we're just talking. is to bridge that gap yeah. so that others don't have to go through what I had to go through right. um, just to get hired Great. and to work in a role that's actually fulfilling to them. Right. So I found that PCB and product design was one of the few skills that encapsulate and used all of one's w right. degree that's right in addition to that kind of entrepreneurial spirit that a lot absolutely. of engineers have absolutely and so uh and to be able to create your own product exactly. so i got that skill that's what helped me got an industry and transition out of power systems i worked as a power systems engineer electrical systems engineer hardware systems engineer python developer embedded and then i switched to pcb design and all that stuff worked at intel Sierra Circuits has been working very hard for electrical engineers and PCB designers like yourself on our engineering tools. These are engineering tools to help you design faster. We want to reduce your design time and get the design right the first time. So our top tools on our website, number one is the PCB Stackup Planner. Uh, knowing that you have a good stackup right away uh, for your design. Number two is the bomb checker. It'll do basic scrubbing, make sure your ref deses are good, your MPNs are good, the MPN matches the description. You know, all these are amazing features of the bomb checker. Uh, we also have an impedance tool, uh, which is based on Maxwell's equations. Uh, and it, these are all for free for the PCB designer and electrical engineer. You know, please go check them out. It's all for you. What we've done at Hasofu is not only that, but to reverse engineer the learn the eight year long learning process right, that I took, right, right, and we've collapsed that down into four and a half months. That's great. Yeah, that's it, wonderful. Yeah, our our students get hired within uh, the top five percent of companies within four to and a half months. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. That's fantastic. Well, I mean, that sounds like a win right there. You know, like I think people should, especially you know, young engineers should take advantage of that. Um, it's in this industry is very interesting because, you know, in my day, I talked to so many countless electrical engineers, PCB designers, everyone comes with a different set of experiences. It, there's no one place that everything's kind of boiled down. Um, you know, and some people learn the wrong things through experience, right? Like it's not necessary that experience only teaches you the right things. It can teach you the wrong way of doing things too. So, uh, you're, your education system has a framework, right? Can you talk about that framework and just kind of break it down a little bit uh, for people who are watching? Got you. Okay, so the framework is basically like this. I've noticed that 
for the most part, every PCB design course and book I've ever read mm -hmm. is really good. Okay. It's good. It has the information and everything. The physics doesn't change. Only problem is right. it takes long to execute on. Right. And you're going to average three to five years to get really good and be able to do confidently build your own high speed boards. Right. Maybe two. It just depends on how much hours. That, that's on average how long it takes. What I decided to do was reverse engineer the process using my own techniques that I do uh, or use. Um, so I'll break down the framework. I come to find that through learning different learning, like learning about different learning methods. Right. There's this book called Ultra Learning. Mm -hmm. Scott Young did an analysis on natural ultra learners. Mm -hmm. And then he developed this process that he said these nine things that they all use. I noticed that those nine things are things that I already did from a young age. So I'm an ultra learner. So I'm like, okay, cool. I found that there's this method, I, I call it for now the understanding method or the root the root cause method to learning. Sure. Sure. And that's what I used to shortcut the process of learning and acing the fundamentals of engineering exam the first time. So I studied for 30 minutes. Usually one studies for about six months, three months to prepare for it. I'm, I'm kind of lazy and procrastinate, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest, but I, at, at least I had this gift, I, I, in a sense, to be able to do both the FE and pass it and the specifics on the E the first time. I said, okay, what if we combine ultra learning, some elements of ultra learning, plus this understanding root cause method into some frameworks and everything? I tested these things out and came to this conclusion. If we do domain based learning, plus space repetition method, plus some key things in the ultra learning methods, plus my understanding method, plus project development and application to execute on each domain learn, this will create a layered experience that will supercharge the learning process. Okay, specifically now, the process is this. Initial exposure to the software tool and the PCB design process, okay? No notes, you just run through it. It's to expose oneself to the process. You're not going to remember much of anything the first right, time around. Right. That's intentional. It's so to get the brain used to the new experience. It's because the brain's used to that new experience, they're not, you're not going to pick up necessarily all details. You need to get re-exposed in a second project. So now your brain's overcoming the overwhelm of the new thing. You do a more in-depth project. This is also taking... Uh, capitalizing on the concept of flow, making projects progressively harder. So we make a longer project that focuses on design for manufacturing and embeds the PCB learning process that you would use for industry at this point. The first project, not so industry standard, normal process, not IPC. Second process, IPC, industry process, plus design for manufacturing. And only focusing on that. Skip signal integrity, skip component selection, nothing. They focus on that. They learn how to get a board out to Sierra Circuits, which we teach in the course. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. I appreciate that. For a first time pass uh, design. And that's what the students, that's what I teach the students at Rochester Institute of Technology and to my students uh, in the second module. The third module, we focus on understanding all the root cause, the root nine problems of signal integrity and how to solve them. Then we do exercises to solve each specific one. And then they do a the third project focusing only on signal integrity on a 10 layer PCB. No, forget manufacturing, for component selection, none of that stuff. We don't care about right, it. Right. The fourth project, they learn high speed digital design. Oh, by the way, we're using Sierra Circuits high speed design guides and signal <laughs> integrity guides and the DFM guides. I mean, just pick them up. It's in my recent video. Okay. Uh, excellent guides, by the way. Thank you for that. It really puts down without having to read a 300 page book the essentials that you need. So we teach the theory from that, and then we have them do a USB board project, six layer, that incorporates all the high-speed aspects. Right. Signal integrity is baked into that. We forget about DFM. Right. The fifth project, they do a power electronics project, so now they can understand PDN analysis right. because they have their signal and integrity and high-speed information. And then they can do that board. And then finally, their sixth project as of right now is a, compl a more complex DDR3 board, moderately complex, intermediate, where they now need to incorporate component selection and 
everything they learned prior. By this time, they don't know how they got the confidence to design this board, but now they just have it because of the domain learning process. I call this the mesh method to PCB design, designing for manufacturing, electromagnetism, signal integrity, high-speed digital design, mesh method. Well, people could really benefit for something from something like this. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's so interesting how all of this kind of culminates into the PCB design effort, you know, and then that's what actually gets built. So, yeah, and it sounds like a very thoughtful, uh, practical way of learning and then ending up with a good product that actually works. You know, you can design something that doesn't work or you can design something that, you know, meets the specs and gets you the desired performance you're looking for. So that's fantastic. Um, so I've been thinking about how to phrase this question because everyone talks about AI right now, right? So. And it's, and, and rightfully so. So, you know, what you're, what you're describing and the way of learning and the way of finally getting to where you're proficient at your job, right? As a PCB designer slash electrical engineer, you know, and, and entrepreneur. I mean, electrical engineers, PCB designer, they're creating something, mm -hmm. right? You're creating something every day, which I find fascinating. So, so now I'm going to ask you this. How do you see AI changing the, the daily work of this type of person? Like what's blank canvas? How do you think that that's going to impact, you know, what, what someone goes through on a daily basis as a PCB designer, electrical engineer? Because please, people are wearing many hats. How do you think that's going to kind of change what they do every day? I think AI is going to do what, ha what it has done for me. So uh, I use AI to read data sheets and analyze data sheets. There's this new feature that Adobe has come out with on their PDFs, Adobe uh, Acrobat or what have you. Yeah. Where you, it can summarize the PDF and it can answer any questions that you have about the PDF. Right. You can feed that into other software like uh AI like Claude and whatnot, um, Gemini, if it takes so many, like 20,000, 100,000 tokens or whatever. So one key thing is being able to read and analyze data sheets mm -hmm. and to give you quick answers right? so you're not spending so much time right. looking for the information. And then you can ping it and ask it, which page are you referring to? And then you can double check. Right. So one key thing is saving engineers time to right. find information. Right. Finding That's great finding key critical pieces of data. The next thing would be for is analyzing like a footprint in a data sheet to give you certain dimensions that are missing, like that you wish you had that the mechanical engineer would just put in there <laughs> so that you don't have to calculate it as much for yourself. Right. You testing those values out in your footprint creation right. and then seeing if the 3D model matches that. So I'm not saying AI is perfect at doing that, but it's really good sure. at, at shortcutting the time. The whole point is like shortcutting the amount of time on the tedious work exactly. needed to extract information and to use it. So now implementation is a bit faster. I'm leaving. I'm By the time it's 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., I'm not drained of all of my creative energy because I was right. busy trying to like download footprints, blah, 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 make sure it's correct and all that stuff because I don't have an assistant with me. It, AI is, has so far helped me alleviate the drudgery of doing electrical engineering and right, design right. work and PCB design that we've normalized and gotten used to that takes the creative soul out <laughs> of us. Um, so AI is, I, I think it's helped us, helped me accelerate. Uh, I, think, I think you said that very well. And I think, you know, just in general, AI is going to do that for a lot of different scenarios, different industries. For a lot of people right if you're a writer or an artist or whatever career you may be in i think ai is gonna you know be able to do that for everybody which is fantastic because of course everyone's going to want to spend their time on you know the stuff that's meaningful and they enjoy and not the drudgery right and and you're pointing out tools that exist today right that you know people can start getting the benefit now i think that's fantastic and um, so uh, let's talk about, um, you know, people trying to do more in the AI space. 
So I know that you're familiar with the company Jitix. Yes. Uh, can you talk about their mission and what they're trying to do and and in you know the AI space and what are they trying to do for electrical engineers, PCB designers, software engineers? What are they trying to accomplish? The key advantage that electrical engineers and engineers in general, but let me speak for double E, yeah. is that the information that AI is being fed right. is based on predictable things that don't change, right. which is rooted in physics and mathematics. Right. Whereas opposed to like maybe copywriting where you need to get certain qualitative data and all that stuff, the physics doesn't change. Physics doesn't change, right. So we have a particular advantage that when we apply tools onto that stuff right. and rules are adhered to, it works. Right. AI, however, I don't think is the appropriate solution for something that is predictable and law-based. You, you don't have to guess at like, it's extra work to run a bunch of data to right. get something that guesses at the right laws and gets right. it right most of the time. Right. Because it's just guessing tokens. Right. You don't want probability embedded in a... No. Right? <laughs> That's why we have circuit and simulators and ANSYS. Right. Those software tools have never designed a PCB in their life. Right. But we trust them and we can design cell phones with them. Right. So we use... we. This is why a programmatic approach right. to doing heavy lifting for certain tedious tasks is super valuable. And this is exactly what JITX is doing. So things like component selection mm -hmm. and making sure that the components that are selected are triply sourced from the supply chain in real time, using real time data, ensuring that, here's the thing, it would normally take me five to 10 minutes to spec out uh, certain resistors, certain capacitors, microcontroller chips, and everything. But with a line of code in JITX, I could say I could say use a rest strap command, pick this package, twelve oh six, uh, one kilo ohm resistor, and so on and so forth. In one line of code, five seconds, it's it's selected for me. Five ten seconds, literally. So these are in training videos that I recently did for JITX, and it's phenomenal. So now I'm saving. Orders of magnitudes of time. Well, maybe not orders. But I'm saving <laughs> multiple hours of time. Right. I can get jo my job done overall in half or a fourth of the time with these tedious little tasks. Another thing that they're doing, they actually have an auto router that I don't have to take a whole afternoon to set up for my specific designer application. Right. There's still some signal integrity rules that need to be set in place, but having it defined in code and then helping the solver use its algorithm to incorporate that data is way less time consuming than doing it in a typical or normal constraint manager. And in addition, it actually does the job. Like when I'm routing the PCB and I'm placing the components and I hit route, auto route, that thing hits it with the right signal integrity. And it doesn't do something that doesn't adhere to the rules I'd set in for the signal integrity. That is an absolute game changer. It has other little features like Wait, wait, in, the, in that, let's just dive a little oh, bit deeper. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, So did you have to set up constraints or something like a constraint system? You do have to set up something okay. like a constraint system. So the constraints on the code is there, but it's less of, it's more algorithmic. I'd say you only need to put in how much delay or loss you want, your requirements. It's a requirement-based input okay. as opposed to you using your own calculators to find out the requirements you need, and then you going into the constraint manager and then putting in the right. distances and the right. rules it, it adheres to. Right. So a typical constraint manager is not aware of right. how to even calculate your requirements. It would allow you to do whatever, right. put anything in there. Right, exactly. And it'll just say, oh, well, this is these are the rules you told me. I don't, I don't know what to tell you after that. <laughs> uh, and you're doing the thinking right. for the software, which right. is what we're used to. Right. The paradigm shift now right. is that the program is doing the calculations for us. Right. And we're just telling it what we want. I say, I want right. no greater loss than this. Right. I want these and these requirements. I want on a six layer stack up. Do it. Solve it for me. Right. Right. And it does that and it does the routing for you. And right. that that is the profound shift that I the paradigm shift that I think engineers have been waiting for in double E to be like, oh my gosh, I'd love for you to do a lot of the heavy lifting for me. Right, right. Exactly. And I could just go in and check and verify the right. simulation. Right. That's what they're doing. 
see the last point that you're making um an engineer still needs to know you know how to engineer uh some good electronics it's just a lot of the heavy lifting can you know be taken off their shoulders uh but you still have to check right you still have to check it it's not we're not quite there yet where you can close your eyes and blindly trust um the the software ai software tools is that a true statement it is especially true for AI because AI currently, until it reaches AGI or ASI, right. AI is literally electrical signals that do not have self-awareness in the tokens or next highly probabilistic guess. It doesn't know if it's right or not. It's just pushing out data right. that looks like something, the data it's been given. It has a certain perception of reality and it puts something out that helps. To us, it looks like it's alive. It's not. And so AI is the least thing I've, I've had to correct ChatGPT a couple of times. I get most of it right. A couple of times on an analysis it would make, like the it had the inverse relationship for signal integrity and um, impedance, mm -hmm. and I had to correct it. And it said, oh, actually, you're right, and so on and so forth. So we have to be very careful of these things. Right. Programming that right. follows the process, it, it only automates the manual process we use, right. we can trust that more. Right. Because if it hits a limit, right. if you put in a certain warnings, right. it will show it will tell you right. the limit and then you can run that through your own calculator and say, oh yeah, this is incorrect. Right. Right. So we, we won't ever, I don't think we'll ever get to the point where we can do that. It would need to be a programmatic approach right. that's predetermined, that models will be do manually anyway, plus an AI approach plus an engineer, it will only accelerate the process. We still need our, in in respects compared to AI, our intelligences or equivalently super intelligences to, uh, to verify. Yeah, no, I think that makes sense. So how do you see like what, uh, uh, well, by the way, are there other companies that you're aware of similar to JITX or trying to accomplish the same thing as what JITX is working on? Yes and no. Okay. Or I should say no and yes. So specifically what JITX is doing and their approach, no. JITX is so far from my research, the only company doing what it's doing. They are truly a market of one. Which is, which is? Which is automating the tedious task, making an auto router that is actually works well, that doesn't take an, a bunch of time to set up. Right. Um, also, another uh, a good number of other features, but oh, pin assignments, automatic pin assignments to where it does pin. It essentially does pin swapping for you, mm -hmm. so you don't have to do manual pin swapping in your ECAD tools, and it takes a lot of the cognitive load out of those three particular tasks okay, and it. more. Um, other tools are other up and coming want to be competitors who will have a lot of work on their hands is. Uh, there's one startup that just started last year and they have a way to go. I won't name them. Okay. <laughs> and then there is, there is Sealess. They are, they're using design reuse blocks that would automatically select components for you based on the requirements you put for those, those design reuse blocks, but it's building off of what engineers have done already. It doesn't get into um, PCB routing, right. essentially yet, right. but it's on the path. So right. they're they're in that. You have Circuit Mind. Circuit Mind is doing the same, but except for digital, not analog yet. Okay. Where they would you input your function blocks, say, hey, this is what I want. Here's the I squared. You may, if you want to, specify an I squared C connection from a one module to the next. It fills in the gaps in terms of devices that would complete those functions and tasks. Okay. And it generates the schematic for you, and it's quite accurate. Um, it's based on programmatic and AI uh, approach. They don't handle analog right now, and there's not a PCB part right now. And you can't. You it doesn't auto update. You have to, you have to do that in the iteration phase at the function block level before you spit out the schematic. So right now, oh, and JITX also has this adapt these modules that theoretically and practically, because I demonstrate this in one of the videos where you change something or a design requirement at the lower base level. And that can, if you program it, you can program anything into these modules. It will 
back propagate, you back calculate everything you put in there to choose the correct component configuration and values and do the component selection for you, whether that's at the top level or at the bottom level, and modules can hold other modules. That means once it's fully fleshed out, you have self-reconfigurable design blocks. And that's true design reuse because you're reusing the actual design work that the engineer went through instead of getting some blocks that you have to modify anyway. Uh, so currently they are a market of one. Other companies are hoping to catch up and they might, they could soon if it depends. If you haven't heard of Sierra Circuits, Sierra Circuits is a PCB manufacturer and assembler all in one located in the Bay Area, uh, right around all the innovation that's happening. And, and Sear Circuits is capable of building everything from start to finish, uh, from simple standard product to uber complex, HDIs, flexes, rigid flex, high speed applications, you know, anything that you can think of, we pretty much can build. Uh, and we do it quick. Uh, so if you need to maintain your schedule and be on time, Sierra Circuits is your vendor of choice. So the time that you've experienced JDX, uh, you would say it's useful today for engineers? It is useful today for engineers. On average, it's useful for certain things you want to do. And I, would, I wager in a few months' time, in about half a year, it would be at the point where people are going to start really realizing that it is, you know, it's missing some things, um, but it's most of the way there. Uh, but it would be useful. So far, I've been able to get a design done in about half the time in terms of PCB layout and routing. So that's that's amazing. And so, but if I'm a startup and I'm working on something that I really don't want to get out there, right? It's very proprietary. It's very secretive at this point. Um, is that, how does JDX and other companies like this handle uh, that aspect of it, like just proprietary information. And, you know, I don't really feel comfortable necessarily with my design going into the cloud, things like that. Oh, you mean proprietary information from their like users or customers, or any company right. dealing with customers in general, right. like right. especially generics? Yeah. Uh, yeah, great question. So uh, any components that are selected from their online database, there's some online thing where you could pull them from. It's just like existing ECAD software. You can get a component online. You make a local copy of it. Okay. And then you do your own. Your engineering team does its own programming. Once they understand how to use the standard programming language, they do their own like programming and stuff. You do your own thing. And that code is yours. It's local to your machine. You don't share that with JITX. That's Okay, great. So that's all private, local stuff. Okay, got it. Yeah. At any time, does the design get generated or is exposed to the cloud or everything's local? No. Everything's local. Everything's if they local. want a cloud, I don't even know if JITX has a cloud option. So everything I've said so far is like on their online documentation. Okay. So, you know, it's just, okay. it. I don't recall seeing a cloud option. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. That's great. So, you know, it's amazing how, you know, the future can, you know, really change the day in the life of an electrical engineer and a PCB designer. So I think it's fantastic. Definitely. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, people are now getting, you know, intrigued with the ideas that are coming from AI, um, but no one really ever saw this coming, right? I mean, in the electrical engineering space, you know, um, when, what do you feel is going to be the tipping point where people are just going to kind of abandon the way they do things today and like move to a more, you know, AI based platform. Well, entrepreneur. It, well, we're talking about double E's, right? Or yeah, are, pretty much. Are you talking about like people mass in general? I think I think double E's. Do you think Do you think that this would open open this up? Open PC PCB design, electrical engineering to people who are not hardware engineers. Do you think it could do that? Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> the way I say, the reason I say yes is because it could ease the, it could ease, it could lower the, the high barrier in terms of learning to gain, gaining access to information. Right. That's been the huge 
problem. So that's why we have these courses that have only started coming out. I think the first course I saw online publicly right. was in 2013, Robert Ferranik's first right, course. Right, right. Because I was looking for PCB design before that, Craig Missner's book, Complete PCB Design. And then I published the first in 2017 on Udemy. Since then, more courses have started coming out the woodwork and everything. Right. AI allowing you to have information at your fingertips right. helps ease that process and do the self-learning. Problem, though, is with how easier that is to get into it, Getting into the deep trenches and books and everything, um, how do I say it? Experience being the only real teacher of PCB design. Yeah. It, it's possible to get into this loop where I have all this knowledge, but I actually don't know how to actually get the board done. I think it's going to widen that gap a little bit hmm. and then cause for people who are mentors or who are knowing what they're actually doing to help the guide people step by step. I, th I guess in a way it yes for sure but it no in the sense that there can be a false sense of security and confidence uh, developed through all this information because it's yeah. in the doing that the pcb design gets done right and uh, despite all the kind of information that people have collected for years right um it takes like someone showing you a lot of times to actually do it yeah to go it's yes to go from not knowing to knowing something definitely can take a mentorship to to get you there yeah or an, on, or an online course you yeah. know um sure so i don't know i guess i guess yes the information is for the fingertips i'll say an overall yes in terms of the ease to be able to actually get there it's just more materials are needed yeah oh, yeah definitely okay great yeah we didn't really we dived i think too soon into the ai discussion um i mean you wear many hats and you only briefly we talked about your company um are you still teaching um, at Rochester? And um, wait, are you still teaching right now? Yeah, on and off. So okay. I teach at the Rochester Institute of Technology. I've taken a year long sabbatical. Okay, okay. I'm contemplating teaching the PCB design course again this fall, but I do need to finish certain research projects and journal papers right. in AI for double E. First, I want to get those out the way and then, but I'll definitely be teaching next spring. But yes, I'm an instructor there. I'm an adjunct professor. I'm also an instructor teaching this semester at the University of Arkansas. I'm teaching mechanical engineers and electrical and computer engineering students, electronics and engineer, electrical and electronics engineering fundamentals. Okay. Um, so those are the two part-time jobs. That's that, great. Yeah. No, that's great. Part-time? <laughs> yeah. For some, those are full-time jobs. Um, and then what is your what is the thesis of your of your papers that you're working on uh, as it relates to AI, I guess? Or? Got you as it relates to AI. So the first one is or the lower hanging fruit is the time and economic analysis of basically how long does it take to get a board done from start to finish? That data is either gate capped or is magically missing from. <laughs> 50 years of hardware design industry. I don't know where it is. And companies don't seem to be talking. Um, so we're doing an analysis on the designs, especially myself and going through with students. Right. How to parse out how long a beginner would take, an intermediate, a professional would take, or and or a team would take on average per pin or per component, per component complexity how long it would take on average for each phase of the pcb design process the hardware design process to get done and are using ai to uh basically give an assessment to extrapolate those values and right. to create a tool even well first of all a paper but then a tool that could predict that um i don't know what kind of flack we might end up getting <laughs> for that but we'll see the second project is uh ai powered software uh, machine learning empowered software that's my personal phd project to where that manages power dispatch on the power grid based on the amount of renewable energy on the grid because i used to work as a power systems engineer right. so the whole other side of double e big power transformers generation interconnect studies um, and i used to work at ERCOT. and so um, i have more experience and research knowledge in in that power systems and control systems than hardware design right now but that's, that gap is very close. 
And then the third project sometime down the road will be probably finite element analysis and how we can use AI to um, improve component placement and routing, suggestions and recommendations for uh, PCB layout. But that's that's down the road. Okay, great. No, that's amazing. Yeah, I know I was recently at a talk that Cadence gave about, you know, how they're changing and morphing their tool to incorporate AI and um yeah, placement and routing was I think the topic of that presentation. So they're they're already trying things and seeing how it's how it's going and yeah. It's pretty interesting where this whole industry is going that way. Um is there something that you want to talk about specifically? I mean I asked you a bunch of questions, but well, I recently noticed your, well, there are many things I want to talk about. Yeah, go for it. But half of them are under NDA because <laughs> <laughs> I could talk about the stuff that Cadence is doing a little bit, uh, but not really <laughs> so that they don't cut my licenses. Um, I noticed that you're doing a community kind of thing yeah. with uh, engineers and workshops and everything. I'm curious about what your vision or mission is for that because we talked we talked about it yeah, i think two years ago when i yeah. uh taught at pcb west yes yes so yes. i was like really excited and i'll say this if there's any company or industry that should talk about pcb design right <laughs> it should be our manufacturers because we rely on you to get to turn our dreams into reality yeah so well, how's that been going yeah, I well, it's I it's going well. It's it is a little bit of a a slow moving iceberg uh, from my perspective, but it's going well. And you know, our mission is um, we're not we're just not a quick cycle time high quality manufacturer. That's you know definitely the bread and butter of, of our business. But that's not all we want to be or who we are. Uh, we want to give back as much as we can to the community, to the electrical engineers, PCB designers who've helped us make, make us successful over the years. And we're just in this very interesting place where, you know, we see so many different types of designs, people always trying to push the envelope, whether it's in their own industry or they're trying to, you know, get something more out of PCB manufacturing and assembly to solve, you know, their, their issue. And we're seeing a lot of changes in the RF uh, industry right now and people just coming up with, crazy ideas and like can pcb manufacturing do this for us because we want to solve this problem um and it could be satellites it could be ground systems it could be anything right so we're just in this interesting place where we see all sorts of you know people and and interesting technologies in in the silicon valley that you know people are trying to change the world and you know i i just wanted to see how we could share that um you know, responsibly with the rest of the world and with other engineers so that it could be a bigger, better uh, uh, place, right? Uh, I want to, I want people to say, I learned that from Sierra Connect. I learned that from Sierra Circuits. Sierra Circuits is, you know, a, a very important part of my career and, and a partner as I grow. So that's kind of like the, that's the, that's the gist. We just want to give back to the community as long as possible, as long as we can. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I saw that. And I was like, yo, this is really cool. And I'm glad you mentioned that, actually, because I do have another thing to talk yeah, about. Yeah, sure. So I recently enrolled, uh, uh, a student recently enrolled, because what you just talked about reminded me of like the key important thing we're trying to do here at SOFU right now for our engineers, right. then eventually software and AI. Great. Um, where I didn't learn this until I got in the double E industry. Right. There are people in their 60s right. going to retirement and all this stuff. They have products that they still want to make right. that they never made. Right. When they started off interested in like tinkering with electronics and all that stuff, and as a kid, they imagined or dreamt that they could do something that would make an impact on the world. And I didn't... I know it makes sense. Well, the reason my big motivation because I I have an invention I want to make and that requires knowing hardware and power electronics design, and it didn't come to me full circle until about two, three, two or one, two to one and a half years ago, when people I'd enroll in the program they'd say oh, I want to do this thing and I'm like and I'm like you're almost retired you're like 
what happened is like, well, I didn't, I wasn't taught the skills or I was in industry and what I was making didn't make an impact or as much as I thought for my own thing, or I felt stymied in this role or that role or stifled. And I'm like, this is a problem. Too many people are going out of this world and, 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 and whatnot and not achieving their actual dreams they got in the industry to, right. to begin with. Right. They're not making that guitar amp. They're not making that um, product that could potentially change so many different things. Right. They're not creating and they've maybe lost a little bit of their spirit. I mean, it's still there, but it, where's the product? I think the, and it's going to be sound kind of morbid, but I think the grave is too rich. Like I want to be the grave robber. I want to take, I want to enable people with the skills of hardware design right. to get their dreams out there right? so that they don't leave with their dreams in their head. Right. That's the whole mission of Hasofu. And that's great. Th it's high time now that the skills gap is bridged. And I see organizations doing that. I see you doing that as well, especially with the manufacturing because like when, when we hit it, we hit it to Sierra and the manufacturer. It was like, oh, these things aren't going to work. We can't make this. Come on now. <laughs> you know, having all these things in place, right. that gap is so wide. And like people right. are losing their dreams. What is the world being robbed of right. from people not having the skills right. and the information they right. need? Right, right. Yeah, no, I think that we're we're definitely at this, uh, you know, this nexus, this tipping point where, you know, people, um, you know, who found it, let's say the, the bar was too high to deliver on their dreams, that it's now possible and for a variety of reasons. So I think it's very exciting times what we're going to see, you know, going forward in the next, you know, three, three or five years. I think the world's going to look very different than what, the way it does now. So Thank you for listening to our podcast. The podcast is for you electrical engineers and PCB designers out there to learn from. And we also have an amazing discussion forum that we recently launched called Sierra Connect. So go there right now, post your questions, and industry experts will respond to your questions. It's an amazing resource that you should take advantage of. I do have another question. Yeah, sure. Given that where you are now, do you see like your educational ventures, your community, because you did mention having this community because I yeah. see a community there as well. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. contributing. Yeah. That you're building. Right. What's your vision for Sierra circuits in this space? And like, I, of course you're still always going to be doing manufacturing. Yeah. That's like, our bread and butter. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, I see Sierra as if, if we can touch more and more engineers, um, that would make me personally happy. And I think that, it um it would complete the mission of the company the company wants to touch as many ees and pcb designers as possible and you know hopefully we leave them better than you know after we've interacted with them than before hopefully we learn from each other right so we do one thing that i think customers over and over have told us that makes us different is not only do we do a good quality uh end product or circuit board but they learn a lot from our interaction, you know, that, that the feedback we give is invaluable. And uh, a lot of the feedback we're giving today has been, you know, when they're pretty much done in their design process. And, you know, with all the educational classes and the webinars and the forum um, and just this podcast, even like, how can we, you know, in, you know, affect someone's design early on? You know, it might be just an idea or a spark at that point. but you know, as they're, you know, trying to get this dream into a reality, you know, early on, how can we make an impact so that things are a little bit easier uh, down the road? That's so true, because when I was working with like manufacturers, they're all they were all good. Yeah. But it wasn't until I started submitting boards to Sierra Circuits. I don't know how I found you online, but I was yeah. finding out like Proto Express or something like that That's right. back in the day. And then the process to send the board to your like your website design and everything the what what is it called done for you um 
the better DFM system you're talking the about? The better DFM system, yeah. the feedback process, the tools that you have on your website, the guides that you have. That's right. The methodology. When I went through that going at doing PCB design in my one of my previous jobs, I said, this is the gold standard for PCB design manufacturing for any engineer. Like other companies, you got to send in the files like this and that. You send in the email and, okay, give me the ODB++. And not that, not that that's um, wrong or anything and everything, but it's just that your process is so streamlined. And I'm like, this makes it so well done and nice. There's no, it, it's just very well done and polished. So I find that to be very impressive, including the tools you have on your website. Thank you. We've been working very hard on the tools, um, you know, to contribute to ease, you know, people, some, not everyone can afford the huge licenses of these crazy tools, um, crazy expensive tools. So we're trying to, you know, put these tools in the hands of basically everybody. They're free. So, um, you know, I hope people use them and uh, get benefit from them. Yeah, we've had a lot of good feedback on the tools. So thanks for saying that. And more to come, you know. Yeah, more to come. I mean, whatever we've done in in helping designers design, there's more to come. And uh, helping people get faster prototypes, there's more to come there as well. I mean, our mission is accomplished if if a designer can go from concept to holding a prototype faster and faster. That's that's what we do. Yeah, that's uh, really been helpful for me. I like the process. Anytime someone says, "Hey, what what." PCB manufacturer, you recommend? I say CR circuits. I'm like, oh, you really CR circuits? Just check out the website. Like, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you also. So yeah. if we if we talk again in a year, like, when what would what would you want to have been finished? You know, like, what's your what's really kind of like a year from now? I really want this done. Like, I really want to accomplish this. <laughs> like in terms of like. What the company or like your life personal in life, or? your life in general? Yeah, I really want to finish my PhD. Cause <laughs> it ex it the they had to extend it. I didn't even notice. I've been in school for for too long. Okay, <laughs> the PhD program for about forever learner eight years. Okay, <laughs> or almost ten now. Okay, so forever learn. I love learning though, so it's yeah. not like the time has it. You know, because so I want to get my PhD done, but doctor in front of my name phd at the end of the name okay <laughs> yeah you know i want to be that guy all right great um i also want to be uh continue working full-time at my company so we can have at least a hundred at maybe thousand or more as many i was gonna say live save but i want to have as many electrical and electronics engineers enabled and actually working in their dream job uh, because I have mentored and guided people back in the infancy of the program where who were working as teachers. Now we have her, she, she was working, she was working in India as a teacher. She had plans to come to the U S but she didn't have really the opportunities to do and work in hardware design like she used to. I mentored her on some things that she was going to need to know to get to the next level. She already had some PCB design experience. Fast forward a year later in the mentorship, I find out she's working at SpaceX That's in great. the U.S. That's fantastic. Uh, Kim, she was doing, she was working in the production line. She was doing her thing, uh, but she wasn't really making use of her EE degree. And that was depressing and draining for her mentored her, told her, hey, follow this, this, and that stuff. Don't get beat up like I did. Go find, look, doing all this information. Follow this path, this course, do this, read this book. Within seven and a half months time, she got hired in her first PCB hardware design role. Now, two years later, she's doing boards that are like a little crazier than what I could do. I'm like, whoa. Okay. That's so, great. so she's now, she's now the teacher, essentially. That's wonderful. And she's working in a role that she actually really enjoys and she's like obsessed about. Uh, Roy, Roy, he was working as a hardware test engineer. Right. He, a masterful hardware test engineer, uh, six months mentorship, that this, that, everything, got three offers in the same two-week period. 
now he's working in research and development. It's like a playground for him doing hardware design boards more complex than I've done. Okay. And I'm like, I didn't know. I didn't know that putting a course out there just for students, low rinky dink Udemy course would lead to this, to where people's lives are literally changing. Yeah, we want to do that as much as possible. And all, we also, I also want to rewrite the entire electrical and electronics engineering curriculum for most universities <laughs> so that it actually bridges the gap between university and industry. So yeah. when recruiters, because recruiters have been reaching out for the last two years, they said the the skill gap is too wide. It's just not there. The experience is not there. Yeah, we, need to, we need senior engineers and stuff. I'm like, I got you. I want it so that when they, when Apple or whoever is looking at our students right. and they see us graduate, they're impressed right. and they're like, wow. And then people are actually able to work in industry in double E right. that they care about and are passionate about. Right. And they don't have to just work to make pay for a living. So people that's, can actually do what they want to do. That's just fantastic. So yeah. inspirational. Yeah. That's just very inspirational. That's fantastic. Yeah. No, I mean... That's all hats off to you making an impact like that. That's fantastic. Yeah. You know, life's too short to not be doing what we came to do. Right. There's no guarantee that we have any more of these. <laughs> yeah. That is true. That is very true. Oh, yeah. there is one more thing. Sure. Lesson planning. Yeah. Good lesson planning. Yeah. I think that's the key to like, for like educators and everything to really look at how we teach things, any skill, PCB design, electric, especially technical skills, right, right. not just throwing a bunch of information at, uh, we're engineers, so we're going to love the challenge and try right. to solve problems, right. but it, it takes too long. Like if, if universities and industry does better and proper lesson planning, right. I think collectively, no, I know collectively, we will literally turn the world upside down and accelerate people's path to success, like by, like, just like that. Yeah, I find it so interesting that, you know, growing up, it was always, I heard software, software, software is changing the world. And, and, and literally now it's hardware is holding its own. And, you know, hardware is what's the, the, the world is standing on, right? So, and I know a lot of software engineers worried about their jobs. Um, so, yeah, it's just interesting how that, how that paradigm shift has happened and uh yeah we gotta get more you know more feet on the street in terms of electrical engineers piece of designers that know what they're doing so exactly and ai is listen okay <laughs> I, I do ai research we've gotten very far with ai right but we got a long way to go so don't worry about if your double e job is going to get taken by AI. <laughs> it's not going to happen uh, that no nah, not Give it another 10 to 15 years, then maybe start getting scared. After that, go into business, okay? <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, hardware engineering is, you know, it's for and double E. It, it's, it's for certain, for people who are really passionate about it. Um, and um, 70, I think I read something where 78% of hardware engineers and PCB designers are retiring over the next 15 yeah, years. There's going to be a definite skills and age gap for sure. Huge skills and age gap. Yeah. So people who are actually, if you're doubting whether you should do double E, if you love it and enjoy it, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Don't only drink the Kool-Aid of data science, AI, all that other stuff. All that stuff is really cool and it pays well. I'll tell you. Okay, but <laughs> if you really truly enjoy double E, don't be deterred by, don't be off put by AI and stuff. It's not coming to take your jobs. It's not going to replace it. You'll do very well and you'll be paid top dollar and you'll have really good um, job security in double E. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, it. No, that's great. No, and so thank you so much for your time today and, and sharing your insights and your experience and, and, you know, keep doing what you're doing. I think you're, it's fantastic, the impact that you're making. It's very thank inspirational. You. Okay. Appreciate it. And, and same to you. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank I'm you. in the community too. So you're, you're Sierra, <laughs> community. I'm in it. Yeah. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. All right. All right. Cool, man. Nice. That was a great, great conversation. Yeah. Appreciate it. Very inspirational.